Primordial Arcana comes out next month and we have been living quite interesting times lately. So, uh, first of all, when and how were these songs written? Well, we this record was completely written and recorded before the plague time began. Um, and so we had everything all tracked, all done, not mixed. And uh, went to do a tour with your great countryman Amorphous and uh, Demo Bourgier in Europe. And as we were flying home from that tour, uh, this would have been at the very end of February. Uh, that was right as coronavirus was beginning. And in fact, Nathan and I got very sick on the airplane ride home. As I was coming through customs back into Seattle, I was drenched in sweat and could barely stand up. I was sick for many days. Very, very possibly we uh, contracted the, uh, the plague on our, on our journeys. And so that kind of slowed, slowed the process down a bit. Um, you know, like everyone, it took some time to adjust and figure out uh, what this all means. Um, but after a month or so, we got right back to the recording process. And because we had extra time, um, because of the delays caused by coronavirus, we decided to mix the record ourselves, um, which is something we'd not planned on doing and something I'd not ever done before, but felt up to the challenge. And I'm uh, so glad that it turned out this way because um, I think this record sounds very fresh and has a lot of vitality and energy coursing through it. And the reason is it's something that we've created entirely ourselves without any outside producers or engineers. It's uh, directly from our hearts and minds. Like you said, uh, you did uh, all of it yourself. So what do you think was kind of the backdrop for this uh, do-it-yourself mentality this time? Oh, it's we're, we're a do, we're a do-it-yourself band, really. This is just our roots coming out of an underground scene where no one will do anything for you. It's all about the community. It's all about the brotherhood. It's all about your friends, the people that support you and the people that you support. And working hard, um, not expecting for anyone to hold your hand or to uh, pay for your uh, tour bus, uh, to buy you a guitar. Now, these are things that you work for on your own. Um, it's an ethic and a mentality that um, is deeply ingrained in, in us as musicians and as, as people and uh, it's just the way we like to work. And how was the recording experience this time? Um, let's see. Well, I was the engineer on this record, which is a job I had not done before. Um, in the past, uh, we've worked with our friend, the great producer and engineer Randall Dunn on Two Hunters, Black Cascade, Celestial Lineage, Malevolent Grain, the EP, Celestite, the synth EP or the synth album, uh, and Thrice Woven. So that's quite a body of work where I was used to um, just being the artist and the drummer and the, you know, the synthesizer player. Um, to take on the role as engineer and producer um, took a bit of uh growth as a artist and as a person to be able to balance all these things but i appreciate that i always like being in a somewhat uncomfortable and new position in the studio uh, for me when um, things we feel as though we're on the bleeding edge of what is possible for us as humans and as musicians i think that's where a lot of the really good music and art can occur going back to the music itself uh what would you say were the sources of inspiration for these songs? Mm. This album we wanted to evoke the magic of the very high mountains here in Cascadia. Uh, we live between two great mountain ranges, the Cascades to the east and the Olympics to the west. And these are new mountains, kind of like the mountains you'd see in Iceland. They're, they've just been born in terms of geological time. Uh, very rocky, sharp, craggy, and steep. And all of us like to journey and hike into these mountains. And uh, there's a feeling that you get when you're at the top of a, of, a, of a great crag at the edge of the glaciers. Uh, it's a feeling of loneliness and great exaltation. Um, 
And so we wanted this album to draw upon those experiences and that very specific feeling that one gets in the high places. Would you say that there's a, a spiritual side to your music? Um, I don't think there's a side that's not spiritual. It's, it is spirit work. It's work that the music comes out of our hearts and our spirits. Um, of course, there's a technical side. There's a, the craftsmanship involved in making music. But that craftsmanship is in service to the spirit. Um, and in our case, they're very specific spirits. We work with deities, with gods, with the spirits of plants and animals. Um, they inspire us and their magic is woven into the music. And uh, if the listener is open to it, they can connect to these spirits and hear their voice. What would you say uh, 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 maybe kind of the roots of that spiritual side of your music? Mm. Well, when this band was first created, um, Nathan was at a gathering, um, it's an Earth Liberation Front gathering, uh, high up in the mountains in Cascadia. And this was a place where people would gather together and do magic, do ritual, and make plans to take direct action uh, to defend the old growth forests which was quite an issue in those days, about 20 years ago. Um, the very last um, stands of old growth forests were about to be logged, uh, which would leave our landscape um, broken and uh, destroyed. And so people were taking direct action, you know, putting themselves in, the, in front of um, the logging machines or the chainsaws and um, this was an important, this is just the culture that our band came up out of. Um, in those days, we were wanting to find music that would express the, 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 the voice of the earth and the voices of our very specific piece of earth, the place where we live and uh, make music that transmits, transmits, this, transmits this message to a wide audience in the hopes that others can hear the same beautiful song that we do. Yeah, I remember uh, that thing uh, from the news back then, actually. The same thing is happening now in Canada at the Ferry Creek blockade. Um, these and blockades that are preventing the oil pipelines traveling from north to south across North America. This is a very sacred work and um, um, the young people who are putting their bodies on the line are great. Um, uh, it's very heroic. Yeah, how do you see kind of this relationship or class between our modern life and then against maybe that kind of more spiritual kind of way of thinking and living? Well, I think that um, there's uh, evil forces who want us to live a certain way. Um, they want us to be passive consumers. And um, uh, just play along with this, uh, this rather demonic uh, push towards uh, late stage surveillance capitalism, let's call it. And this is, this is at odds with a spiritual view because when one opens oneself up to the voices of the spirits of the earth, the voices of the ancestors, the voices of the plants and animals, this uh, way of living based on endless consumption, greed, uh, the um, shallow imagery of social media, 
whatever I could go down the list the uh you know the the shed the dark side of the modern world it's just not the good it's not a good way to live um it's damaging to us as individuals it's damaging to the earth and will lead to the destruction and death of all life um and so what do we do um this is an individual this is the work of the individual to find the small and infinite ways in their own lives to come into resonance with the truth, with a um, path through life that um, is in harmony with the forces, with the, um, with the earth and is in our own best interest because it will allow us and our children to continue to exist. I'll take it back to the music uh, just in a minute, but uh, like you've been talking about this uh, uh, this evil that uh, it seems to be winning at the moment. So how much hope do you see for humanity at the moment or Earth? I'm actually quite optimistic. I think that a lot of the evil, you know, the perception that evil is winning is created by, um, it's created by the evil people or the people that are possessed by demons um, that control powerful media outlets. I believe that our consciousness is very strong in um, determining the nature of our reality. And if we are fed images of death and destruction, then it appears as though the world is com completely full of death and destruction, which it is. Um, but there is hopefulness as well. And I think that the hope that I feel is very small. These, they're tender, the tender buds on a blot, on a tree in May um, and need to be cherished and treasured. Um, and these will be very small things. I don't think that these, this will be a, uh, something that even people would notice necessarily. I think these are the very small actions of individuals uh, in resonance with their own truth. Um, listening to the voice of their own heart, making, you know, walking a path in life that is true. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, I do feel hopeful. I think that um, life and the will, the force of life is very strong. Life wants to continue. And I think that it will find a way to do it. We've been talking about the spiritual side of your music. In your mind, how does that uh, translate to your live concerts? Um, oh, the live concerts are an invitation to the audience to join us in this, in our world, the to feel the same things that we feel, um, to touch and to hear the same songs from the natural world that inspire us um, it's been quite difficult this past uh two years to um, not be able to to share in this communion with um with our fans and our our worldwide family but um well you know this will this will pass and um, music is very very important to people and um and i know that when concerts when we are able to return it's going to be very precious and very sweet yeah, like you said, that uh, songs were written and uh, recorded uh, before the plague started. So how has it been to, um, well, kind of, you know, uh, the last uh, one year and a half, the time of the plague, you know, to, you know, work on this material, maybe partly sit on the material. And uh, how do you find the experience of publishing new music at this time? Um, well, we are excited to release it because we did delay the release by 12 months, um, which was actually quite good for us. Um, because if we had done everything on schedule, then um, I think we would have exhausted ourselves, to tell you the truth, because we worked so hard making the music and mixing the music. Um, if we would have gone right out on tour, I think that we would have not had enough time as individuals to center ourselves, make take care of our bodies and our minds and spirits. Um, so in many ways, 
this COVID time has been a bit of a blessing for us to slow the pace of our life down. And um, it's given us much more opportunity to spend time in nature and um, work on our meditation practices, spend time with our families, um, uh, make sure that we are in the best condition uh, when we are able to return to the road. You were saying that you are still hopeful for Earth. So, uh, you know, how would the world look like when, you know, the evil is defeated and the spiritual side conquers? Um, well, it's hard to say because um, I think that the future, the good future that I pray for is something that we can't imagine. Um, it's something will happen that we cannot uh, currently conceive of. Um, and I think that the wisdom of the earth and the wisdom of the spirits is beyond us. And um, it's a possibility, you know, it's, it's a, it's a dream um, for personally, when I vision into that future, I see a lot of gardens, a lot less asphalt, um, a lot of music, a lot of people living together in great joyfulness, um, bringing forth the beauty of the ancient ways with the infinite possibility of human consciousness. Um, yeah, may it be so.